All right. How to be life partner? You know, marriage is a, a critical subject, and like I keep saying, um, Satan is hell bent on destroying man, destroying society, and he doesn't just come attacking society. What he does is to go attacking man directly, and how he does that is to attack the family. The family unit is a threat to Satan. I to shock you, even in the marriage of unbelievers is a threat to Satan. Satan doesn't want that. And the marriage of believers is <laughs> a serious threat to, to Satan because when a born again man marries a born again woman, and Bible says God is with them, a threefold cord cannot easily be broken. So the born again man, the born again woman, because God is the threefold cord can, that cannot easily be broken. And not just that, the marriage between a born again man and a born again woman is a representative of the Trinity on earth. And Satan does not want that. Because when he sees a man that is saved with his wife, he sees the Trinity. And they cannot easily be broken. No, actually when Jesus said, if two shall agree upon any matter on earth, he shall be established to them. Yes, it goes to every believer, every two man with another sister, and agree on something, or a brother with another brother, and agree on something, it will surely come to pass. We're more so when a wife and a husband join their own hands together. When a wife and a husband join their hands together, that is the ultimate. Nothing shall be impossible to them. Nothing is possible to them. So, I am uh, seeing a lot of marriages going haywire. A lot of marriages going haywire. It's people that just got married in a couple of months. They are talking separation, they are talking divorce. And it ought not be so. Definitely not. It ought not to be so. Uh, one of the reasons why it is like that is because a lot of them got into marriage without the necessary knowledge, information. A lot of them got into marriage without the necessary guidance. They just got into marriage just like that, just like um, leaping before they look. And of course, you know, the popular saying is look before you leap. A lot of people, when it comes to marriage and choosing who to marry, actually leap before they look. Before they look. So it's, it's a subject we need to look at. We will go through a lot of things that are you know necessary or should be taken into consideration before you marry. And the first one is what I call intimacy with God. Number one. Intimacy with God. Very important. When a man has a good relationship with God and a woman has a good relationship with God, they form a triangle. God on top, the man and the woman. The man is chasing God. The man has a relationship with God. The woman also has a relationship with God. The man, will I say, is a bit ignorant of the woman, while the woman is a bit ignorant of the man. Their focus is building a relationship with God. That is their focus. Once a single man focuses on building a relationship with God, and a single woman does that. What will happen is if you look at that triangle, as they are moving closer to God, they come to a point where they meet. Once that happens, connecting to God won't be a problem. But what really happens is that the man is chasing the woman, the woman is trying to make herself so pleasant to them, and they forget their relationship with God, which is the upper relationship. And once you come together without God being involved, you know what will happen. So that's the first key I'm going to give. Intimacy with God. Very, very critical to your choice of a life partner. It solves a lot of problems for you. Because when you're intimate with God too, you have the Holy Ghost as your guide. As your guide. You have the Holy Ghost as your guide. So intimacy with God is the first I'm going to give you, the first principle I'm going to give you in the choice of a life partner. The next one I'm going to give you 
which is number two, is knowledge. I'm going to read a scripture on that for you. Proverbs 24. Proverbs 24. Say something. I'm going to read from verse 3. The Bible says, True wisdom is a house built, and by understanding it is established. And by knowledge, its chambers is filled with all precious and pleasant riches. A wise man is strong. Yes, a man of knowledge increases strength. True knowledge, the house is built by understanding, it is established. By knowledge, the rooms are filled with all, with all precious and pleasant riches. A wise man is strong. Yes, a man of knowledge increases strength. So the, the four things you're going to note there is build, that is King James English, or built. The second, established. The third, filled. The fourth, strong. Those two things, know them. And what brings about these three things? It's knowledge, understanding that knowledge, and using that knowledge right. Then there's a principle we call the source and the sustainer principle. The source and the sustainer principle. That is where the establishment comes in. It's, it's to source, it's to establish, that is the sustaining part of it. Then it will fill, the Bible says it will fill the house with all pleasant riches. That means the, the, the third earth. I want you to note there is saturation. That when this happens, the fourth will happen, which is strength. That thing becomes strong. Strength. It becomes strong. So, the second thing, after intimacy with God, which is a, a principle, the second principle I want you to note is knowledge. You can also use the word wisdom. You can also use the word understanding to represent it. But the fourth thing I want you to note under this principle is, number one, source. Sustainer saturation strength four things very important not just in marriage but in everything you're going to do in life you need these four things to happen and the first point of call is wisdom it's knowledge it's understanding you know the bible says in proverbs that wisdom is the principal thing you can't ignore wisdom you know growing up we're taught a song uh, that goes first prayer is the key prayer is the key prayer is the master key i totally refute that the first part of the song is right prayer is the key prayer is, oh prayer is very very important but prayer is not the master key. Prayer does not answer every problem. No. There are some problems you'll be faced with. Prayer will do nothing to help you out. What you need there will be wisdom. The wisdom. The wisdom. Either you get it from cancer, from somebody that is wiser than you, or you go back to the Bible and dig deep. Wisdom. And this is usually the number one problem of failing marriages in our society today a lot of people get into marriage without knowledge without wisdom they don't even understand what they're getting into and they make a big mess of it one of the things they don't even know that they're getting into that they're getting into a blood covenant subsequently this life class goes on i'm going to teach on that but not today what is called the marriage covenant because when you truly understand the marriage covenant you cannot let your marriage fail. It will never happen. But because a lot of people don't understand what marriage is, that the marriage is a covenant, not just a covenant, but a blood covenant. Because marriage is a blood covenant. Just understanding that alone will cure a lot of madness in our relationship. We will remove Satan's hand from our marriage. Just the knowledge that marriage is a covenant. Now, when you go, when, I'm sure most of you listening to have gone to school, you are going through school right now when you're in school. You know, they don't give you your degree. They don't give you your degree when you are matriculating. No, they give you your degree after matriculation, after graduation, or when you are graduating. They cannot, you know, when when you look at your degree and field, all the conditions necessary for the award of the Bachelor of Science or the Bachelor of Arts or you know whatever degree that is. 
you have fulfilled it then when you are sure you have fulfilled it by taking your tests your exams your seminars your projects you've done all that you've attended lectures then they will award you a degree a degree because you fulfilled all the conditions but in marriage they give it to you at matriculation as you are matriculating as you are getting into marriage in the church or in the court or in the registry where you got married they award you your certificate your marriage certificate before you commence the journey and this journey is for a lifetime not four years or six years or five years this journey the school the institution of marriage is for a lifetime where you've got your degree before you started that tells you how important it is so a wise man a wise young girl a wise young woman a wise young man will first go and get the necessary knowledge hey i'm about to step into this institution i know nothing of or you have the not maybe the knowledge you have for of marriage is or, or it, it, it was what, what you built up over time either reading all those romantic novels happily m and b you know those romantic novels or maybe what you've watched on tv no don't let the world teach you about a godly institution because of god of course getting to the godly institution of marriage having the world system knowledge of what marriage should be like or what relationship should be like and we make a mess of it if you have a message a bmw toyota a nissan whatever car you have when you bought that car there's something usually a wise person will do first the person will sit in the car open the glove compartment and bring out a booklet called the manual why the manufacturer of that car put put in in, in the glove compartment a manual informing you about the car what the car can do and what the car cannot do about the parts the different parts and you know parts nowadays are, 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 are now so high tech that you need a manual to go about go around it let yeah, me talk about the car what of a phone a smartphone oh, most of us have a smartphone and most of us what we just do to our smartphone is just to make calls and answer calls then send text message, messages or or whatsapp messages and that's it do you know if you have a smartphone you can do a whole lot of smartphone a whole lot I usually it, I don't know the number of times I actually get to my system even though that I'm doing a lot of work right now I, I use my system <laughs> what usually happens is that I use my smartphone now for almost every and anything everything your computer can do your phone can do now when a lot of us have smartphones don't even utilize up to 10% of the capacity and the capability of that phone why we are ignorant of it so when you're getting to the marriage institution you need to prepare for it that's just what i'm saying you need to prepare for it keep getting knowledge while you're at it that's what this course is um how to choose a life partner a lot of us have chosen a life partner but that doesn't mean you shouldn't listen to what i'm saying because you're going to learn a whole lot of stuff okay there are other things under knowledge you to look at first biblical standards what does god say about marriage biblical standards you know so you have to compare that you prepare your mind and your heart to understand god's ways and standards you know when it comes to marriage and all that if not satan is going to use subtle ways to dissuade you to distract you and to cause trouble in your marriage the second thing you need to know under this knowledge principle of knowledge is know yourself know yourself very very important because you cannot know for sure who to marry if you don't know yourself. So, the first thing I will tell you is first know who you are, know your purpose in life. I have, there's another principle, so I won't really talk so much about knowing yourself now. When I get to that one, we'll talk about it. But there's something about yourself I want to talk about here first. In knowing yourself, you need to recognize and seek godly help for any issues you might have had in your past you know a lot of people we are abused growing up either sexually physically and all that they were abused things like that affect you in your marriage so you need to have handled things like that before you step into marriage a lot of us might have had crazy history of immorality my wife and i I think a few days ago we were watching, we were watching um, this show on TV here where they take young men and ladies in their early 20s 
grows up in a villa somewhere in the south of Spain. And, you know, you know what happens, just like the bachelor and all that. And the ladies gathered around and they're having a conversation and they're they asking themselves how many guys they slept with. And I was shocked. A girl that, that was like 20 said she just slept with 26 guys. 20, 20 years, 20 years, 26 guys. I know when I was like 20 something said that she can't count, but it's about 50. 20 something, about 25 year old lady has slept with 50 guys. And they think if they marry that they won't have issues regarding that. Of course, you could have issues regarding that. I'm not saying if, you, if you've had a promiscuous lifestyle that you're, you're going to have a failing marriage. No, that's what I'm saying. But you need to deal with some issues before you get married, if you have a kind of past, that's what I mean. Or maybe you've been involved with the occult, or maybe you've been, you, you, you have one addiction or the other, or maybe you have you, you, you have pangs of depression. So the things you need to know. Pangs of depression that comes, goes, you know, there's some things you need to know, there's some things you need to be aware of before you choose a life partner. And many other things, because these little, little things like that, are what have made you who you are you know they say everyone is like 80 to 75 percent a product of nurture not really nature the product of nurture meaning your socialization your environment the people you are around you know growing up formed a large part a large, a large chunk of who you are at the moment so things like that also come into play so you need to know yourself you need to have you know adequate knowledge of who you are and there are three facets of that they say there's the you you know which is the, uh, the known you, then there's the you you don't know that other people know, which is the blind you or your blind self. And then the third part is the hidden you. You don't even know about that part. Nobody else knows about that part except God that created you. So those are some of the issues you need to embark on a quest to discover. You need to discover your self-discovery, the quest of self-discovery. So it's very, 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 very important. On that knowledge, there's another the third part, the third facet, I also want to talk about that is um, know the opposite sex. Knowing the opposite sex. If you're a guy, you need to know the ways of the woman. Solomon talked about his sons of Solomon. He said, Who knows the ways of a maiden? You need to know about women in general. You might not know them, you know, specifically, but in general, you need to know that women are emotional creatures. A lot of men don't know that and they treat their women anyhow. You need to know that women are emotional creatures. You need to know that women are moved by what they hear. Women fall in love with their ears. Guys fall in love with their eyes. So as a guy, if you don't know that, you will not have good raps. You need to have good raps. You need to have good lyrics. You need to, you need to know how to, you know, chat a, a lady up. You know, what usually happens is that some guys now get into church and they lose all their raps. When they were in the world, they were the Snoop Dogs and the Dr. Dreads. Now they've gone into church. The only rap they know is, uh, sister, uh, hey, what the pastor say last Sunday? Man, that message uh, was so solid. The pastor, strike. she did feel the power and the anointing. Yes, all that happened in church, but that's not what you need to be discussing with a woman or a girl, a young girl. You are interested. Now, I'm not saying you should not be spiritual. No, 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 no. But one thing you also need to know that your spirituality does not cancel your sexuality. Know that for sure. It has to be very, very spiritual. For that, the first thing I should have said: marriage is highly spiritual, and that's the truth. I see that that skips my mind. Marriage is highly spiritual. But I'm going to give a second statement: marriage is also highly physical. They both run concurrently, so you can negate one and negate the other. You think they're going to make a head or make make a success out of a marriage? No, no, no. You need to be balanced. Be spiritual. You also have to be physical. When it comes to marriage, be canal. Is somebody hearing me? So it's very, very important. You need to know the opposite sex. Ladies, you need to know about men. You know, a lot of ladies get into marriage with high expectation. They have crazy expectations that they are shocked in the first few months of marriage. And a lot of them enter depression. That is why a lot of marriages crash in the first three years. And you know why it really crashes the first three years? Because both parties enter the marriage with high expectations, and those expectations most most often are not are not met. And they think the only way out is to leave. It doesn't work that way. 
doesn't work that way. And why usually they have this high expectation is also because they, you know, they don't really know the opposite sex. And they're selfish. And that is the truth. Selfishness plays a whole, you know, a big role when it comes to marriage compatibility because um, the wife wants it to be all about her. The husband wants it to be all about me. Everybody is seeking his, well, I mean, wants his own emotional needs met and they forget that they also need to meet the other person's emotional need because marriage is an emotional need meeting institutional relationship why god instituted marriage is to meet man's emotional need why god instituted marriage is to meet the woman's emotional need now there's a principle in the bible called the principle of first mention the principle of first mention states that to know the reason why or to know the primary reason for something go and find the first place it was mentioned in the bible now for you to know the primary reason of marriage go and find where marriage was first instituted in the, in, in, in the bible usually when i teach on marriage and all that i usually ask people why they want to get married that is if it's a premarital is a premarital class or why you want to get married or why you got married if it's a marriage class <laughs> one day a guy told me something yeah he said pastor i want to marry a fair woman i said why pastor so when i'm driving on the road she will be shining out of the car like a sun that's the reason for getting married don't laugh too much i'm sure if i ask you <laughs> to ask you no reason you're going to give me something funny why did he answer like that because because they did not get adequate information they did not get adequate information about money if i'm going to change versions or let you know genesis chapter 2 because you know what happened god made man dropped him in eden and um one day god said something verse 18 and the lord god said it is not good man should be alone i will make him a helper comparable to him king james said a help meet m-e-e-t not m-a-t-e no we really call our spouse helpmate no yes though she's your helpmate as far as she's your partner but she the reason why god the reason the reason god's used or said is help meet what does that mean a suitable a suitable help suitable help and what was the reason god gave before he said that and the lord god said genesis 2 verse 18 and the lord god said it is not good for man that man should be alone a lot of people said they want to marry or not marry because of kids beautiful kids are a fallout of marriage but the need to have a child or the need to have kids should not be the primary reason it can be your secondary reason for marriage they should not be your primary reason for marriage that is why you see couples especially the ladies the, the mothers when the kids start coming they ignore their husbands they no longer meet the man's need as they ought to they focus now on the children and that's also one of the things that also cause cause friction in marriage was remember what i said marriage is a need meeting relationship so when your needs are not adequately met in marriage, people start seeking paternity. So the primary reason for marriage, for those that are not married yet, is companionship, not children. Not children at all. It's companionship. So that is very, very critical. That's all the, 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 the knowledge you need to pass across to you. So the, other, the, fourth, the fourth facet of knowledge is past experience past experience turn your failures into successes fail forward john maxwell wrote a book which he called failing forward fail forward yes you've made mistakes yes you failed in the past don't go mourning over them turn your failures into successes what does that mean take the knowledge from your past experiences from your past relationships and convert them into an asset in your court to find a life partner it's very 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 important 
you now know the choices the choices you made in your previous relationship whether conscious or unconscious so one of the things you now need to go back on and um reiterate as you move forward in in your choice of a life partner uh, so the things you need to consider some of the questions you need to consider going forward is what did you like what did you enjoy doing most with your partner that's the last relationship you had what did you disagree with your partner about what did you criticize your partner for and what did your partner criticized you for why did the relationship end it's like a debrief it's like a debrief you know conduct a debriefing on yourself or conduct a debriefing on that relationship on your past relationship and take the learning points take the points another thing the flip side there is you know the mistakes you made avoid them avoid them einstein albert einstein is a record that he finally got a breakthrough after trying it 999 times that the 1000th time he got a breakthrough and somebody asked him, ah, so you kept going on. He said, yes, that for every miss, for every failure, he learned how not to do it again. So don't go moaning, oh, I've dated seven guys, I've dated 12 guys, is there any hope for me? Is there any man out there for me? Is there any woman out there for me? Don't go moaning at the failures. Convert the failures now into into into, into your aspects. Learn from them. So it makes it easier now to know a man or a woman that the image won't work out with because you can see in him something that was in your previous relationship and so you don't go wasting your time because time is a great asset you don't joke with your time if it's not going to work if it's not going to work you quickly 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 cut it off and you move on as soon as possible then okay, part of that is learn to recognize predators know those guys that are coming just because of what they can get from you a, 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 one of my one of my sisters hit me up on uh, WhatsApp a few days ago. <laughs> I was asking her how far with guys now. When what is happening? So guys are coming now. That that what she's noticing that some guys are coming now, and they come for what they can get from her. And I'm like, what is going on? They're asking for money. They want to borrow money from you. She said, what came? I was asking her for money. I said, it's the way she kicked that one out of her, her life i mean and it is a growing trend that's one of some of the things we're going to discuss here in saint hall we, you know if you have uh, not gotten on my blog get on my blog we have a section a page called saint hall where we have you know like a town hall discussion all the subjects we're going to be discussing there soon that there's a growing trend of men now that seek out women that either are working in the bank or working somewhere where they think they're making money and they themselves are not really doing anything but they want to marry them as security for their own future it's a growing trend they're going to discuss that in some other forum not this one and i'm like what is going on a man should be a man a man is supposed to fend for his family not the other way around and that's one of the other reasons why marriages are also failing now because a lot of marriages that, that are going to strain or have failed already are marriages or some of the marriages are marriages that the financial strain got so much on the woman whilst the man who is busy gallivanting. We'll talk about that in the marriage life class. This is for those that are not married. So, well, some of my things you need to know, if you wish, if you wish, like for a young lady, you need to recognize this in any man coming for your hand in marriage if that man appears as if he's looking for something he's not only asking you for money either directly or indirectly yeah some of them say ah let, bring the money let me pay my rent say it's two of us that will live in the house hell no sister take off the man should go and pay house rent set up his house that's one of the principles of marriage for a man's perspective he needs to have a home to bring the woman into very very important he needs to have a job a man that doesn't have a job she remove marriage far from his mind ever as far as the east is from the west so should marriage be far from the man's mind and you know if you travel from the east to the west you never get there why there is the, the, the distance between the east and the west is infinity there's a distance that man that is not working or does not have a source of livelihood Everybody mustn't work. Some people should do business. Some people should, should get into their uh, intellectual 
and, and, and sell it and make some money. But what I mean, I mean, if that man doesn't have a source of income, man, if you're listening to me, forget marriage, forget relationship. What you should fill your mind, your days with, is how to make an income for yourself. That's the next thing we're going to talk about purpose. We're going to talk about another purpose. But let me give you the last facet, the fifth facet of knowledge. That is drawing strength from good marriages. If you're not married, look for good, godly, Christian couples and draw strength from them. Observe them. Observe them if possible. Like one of the one of the principles we're going to talk about we'll get there is getting a mentor. If possible, go get a mentor from a married woman that her marriage is working. Guys, get a mentor from a married man that his marriage is working. A Christian godly man, a Christian godly woman that their marriage is working. Make them your mentor. Draw strength from them. Why? They're going to help you a whole lot. Why? They are already in it. They've been in it. So they can tell you what to do and what not to do. They've gone on that journey and they're still on it. So they can help you. They've also gone through several learning curves. And they will help you out and save you time. Save you every other resource of time. Heartache and all that. Get a mentor. Very important. So let me just do a, a, a brief recap. I'm going to be ending this live stream because it's late, so I go to sleep, and we'll continue tomorrow. This is just part two. We're going to have several parts on how to choose a life partner. I think the only thing we've, we've achieved is just talking about two principles: intimacy with God and knowledge. So the three, the five facets or the five subtopics under knowledge is number one: biblical standard. Always go for what the Bible says, not what they did in one movie or what your what they did in one of your aunt or what your uncles or your aunties did in their own marriage. No, go back to the Bible. The second one is know yourself. You need to know yourself. Because if you don't know yourself and what you want, you, you, you will be able to choose the right person. The third is know the opposite sex. A healthy knowledge of the opposite sex will help you. How they think, how they behave and all that will also help you in the choice of a life partner. Number four, past experiences. Learn from them. Like I said, like I said, fail forward. Turn your failures into successes. The fifth one of the knowledge is learn and observe good marriages and learn from them. And as I'm going on, if there's something you have in mind, you need clarity on, you can buzz me, ask me a question. If you don't ask it on under the live stream as a comment, you can send me a message that's direct messaging, you know, to to be anonymous. So very, very important. Then the third principle of marriage is purpose. Okay, there's a question I'm already seeing here. Is it compulsory for both parties to have the same couple, husband and wife, as their mentor? No, 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 it's not compulsory. It's not compulsory. But let me say something on that. Though it will be better, but it's not compulsory. Why did I say it will be, uh, it be better? It will be better because if the two of you drink from the same source, there's a principle called uh, spiritual homogeneity, which I will explain in details when we get there. It all talks about drinking from the same source. It solves a lot of problems. Like under spiritual homogeneity, when I talk about spiritual homogeneity, basically the primary homogeneity when it comes to that spiritual aspect of homogeneity is that the two parties must be born again. And if you're a Christian listening to me, that's standard. We know that you must be you must be born again. Because the Bible said in First Corinthians 6 that do not be equally yoked with an unbeliever. I mean, there's no comparison. I mean, you guys don't have the same um, level playing. That's the primary one. Everybody knows that. And that's the basic you know standard. But there are other levels of spiritual compatibility. If both of you, let's say both of you are born again, but one is from an orthodox setting and another is from a Pentecostal setting. Though the two of you are born again, primary homogeneity is in place. Secondary homogeneity is not in place. It's not in place. I won't go in detail. So that means you have to keep up with the whole series. So when I get there, you have a, I'm going to go into details. Now, let me give you another one. What is the two of you? 
are born again, the two of you are Pentecostals. But I'm not castigating any church. I won't do that. But I'm just saying this just for us to have understanding of what I'm teaching. But under the Pentecostal system, there is a particular church where the sisters don't make up. The sisters don't wear jewelry, earring, necklace. The sisters, when they go to church, tie scarf from, they just barely escape their eyebrow from here. You watch you. They'll go like this, cover a bit of their ears, but not all, so they can be here in the summer, but they'll cover small. The, the ears must enter the scarf all the way, so no strand, no strand of hair can can you guys are you guys still are you guys still receiving me i'm getting a message that i'm not on if you think you receiving me can you just make a comment like guys can still see me and hear me i don't get a message that my the video is cut off or something all right i'll just continue they tie the scarf and all that then they wear dresses that cover cover the whole hand nothing shows total neck total neck dresses then the dress must flow down to the ankle so no part of the body is showing that is the way they dress in that church which is good there's nothing wrong with that it's beautiful that is decent dressing that is modest dressing i'm not against it i'm just making an example then that's the sister and the a brother still in, under the Pentecostal setting but he's coming from another sect. Okay, thank you guys. Thanks for the feedback. Still in the Pentecostal section, but <laughs> another sect in under the Pentecostal setting. In this sect, the sisters don't tie scarf. They leave their hair open to come to church. While in this other sect, any sister that does not tie scarf will not even cross the gate. Why? As far as they are concerned, you are an unbeliever. But in this sect, the bro. Their sisters don't tie scarf, they leave their hair, they wear trousers, they wear anything to come to church. And the two of them they want to marry. They are born again, they believe in the Holy Ghost, that means they are Pentecostal. But they are in on the there are two different sects they want to come together. So though they are born again, this is now tertiary homogeneity. They are not homogeneous at that third level. If they marry, the, the problem now imagine if it's the brother that's coming from that side where the tie scarf and the sister from this from the sect where they leave their hair open when the bro from that sect marries this sis you know what happened the bro will tell this sister that all her christian life has been leaving her hair open wearing trust and going to church worshiping god to you tell you try and tell that sister that she needs to start wearing maxi tie scarf stop relaxing her hair let her natural hair grow stop makeup and all that how will that marriage work? Though they already started with crisis, though they are born again, though they have the Holy Ghost on their inside and upon them, they have already started in crisis. I use this is those little, little, little salient points that we overlook when we want to choose a life partner are usually what causes trouble in the long run. So, is it compulsory for the both of them to have the same couple as their mentor? It is not compulsory, though it's better. It's not compulsory. There's another case I know. The lady came and told me then this is before they got married. There's the, the brother that wants to marry her told her, make this sister in touch, your mentor. And so I was like, ah, I don't really flow with that lady, but I flow with this other lady. He said, No, it must be this sister that will be your mentor. And she came to me, she said, I can't pass her. What should I do? He's forcing me to go and tell uh, and, and have this other lady as her mentor. She said, but I don't flow with that lady. There's nothing I don't really there's nothing in her I admire. I don't flow with her. And I sat her down. I said in marriage that when we read Ephesians chapter five, let me read that past that, that, that place in the Bible for you. Ephesians chapter five. See what the Bible said in verse um and of course you know that chapter 5 from verse 22 to 33 was all about the analogy paul made using 
the husband and the wife and Christ and his bride, the church. We see what the Bible says in verse 26. We can enter from verse 20, 25. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself. Uh, verse 26. That he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word. That he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word. See the next verse, verse 27. That he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. So I read this scripture for her. I said, are you seeing what Christ is doing for us, his bride, the church? That he's sanctifying us, he's cleansing us, using the word. Why is he doing that? So that he might present us, the church, his bride, to himself. The way he wants us to be. And I told her something, I said that Christ is customizing us the way he wants us to be. You know, in Europe, when you want to buy a car, you can actually customize it straight from the factory the way you want it. You can choose the color you want. You can choose the kind of interiors you want. You can choose the kind of gadgets they should install into the car. You can choose all kinds of things. You customize your car. You make the car specific the way you want it. So that if it is a if it is a Honda Accord 2017 model on the street, when you also drive out your own, the same car, Honda 2017 model, but because you've customized your own, your own will look a little different from the other one. This is what the every husband seeks to make his wife. And usually one of the things that causes friction in marriage is this. Because when the man is trying to customize his wife, the woman will constantly resist it. Because the man has an idea of how his wife, how he wants his wife to be. So when I told her, I said, see, this man has observed this other woman in church. And he believes that this is the kind of wife he wants. So when he, when he said when he was telling you go and make that woman your mentor, he is actually he's you know part of the thing is this is is part of the customization that is going on. He wants you to be a little bit like her. Maybe there's some virtues in that woman that he wants to see in his wife that he's not seeing yet in you. That's why he's pushing you towards that woman. The time I explained this to her, she was like, oh, okay, 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 I get, I get. And incidentally, I know everybody in the picture. That woman, the man, was asking this young lady that he wants to marry, get married to, 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 to was, he was nudging her to, to go and make her a mentor. The woman's husband is actually his mentor. Are you seeing the point? So he also wants his mentor's wife to also mentor his future wife. So it makes sense. It makes sense. But like you said, is it compulsory? No, it's not compulsory. But if you understand uh, the the principle of drinking from the same source, it will solve a lot of problems. The third principle is the principle of purpose. Very, 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 very critical. Very, very, very critical. The principle of purpose. The first four principles I'm going to give you, which this is the third, are very, very critical. You cannot, you know, negate these principles, and I cannot even overemphasize them. The principle of purpose is so important. A lot of people have difficulty in choosing who to marry because of this principle. I usually tell single men and single ladies that until they know the reason why they are here on earth, they shouldn't marry. There are about four questions everybody should answer in life. There are about four of them. Everybody should answer in life. The first one is the question of purpose, of identity. Who am I? You need to know who you are. I've talked about that briefly on that knowledge. Know yourself. Who am I? The second question is the question of 
what am I doing here? Which is a question of purpose. What am I doing here? Everybody born on earth, everybody was released from heaven for a reason. The popular scripture, Jeremiah 1 verse 5, talks about, you know, before I was born, that God speaking to the prophet Jeremiah said before he was born, he knew him. He knew he knew him. They actually ordained him and sent him at that time for a particular purpose. Everyone born on earth was born with a purpose. Every single one. Every single one. So when people call kids born out of wedlock illegitimate children, they make a big mistake because there is no child that is illegitimate. Instead, the man and the woman, the boy or the girl that brought that child and gave that child life are actually illegitimate parents, not the child. No child is a bastard. Every child born at any given time, they were all born for a reason. All of them born for a reason. So the question of purpose is critical. It's critical. Question of purpose. You need to know the reason why you're here because when you know the reason why you are, you are here and what you're supposed to achieve actualize in life it makes it easier to choose a life partner it makes it easier to know who, who to marry because if you marry somebody that his purpose or her purpose is totally different and divergent from your purpose you've already signaled that marriage will go nowhere. That does not mean the marriage will fail. It still does not mean the marriage will fail, but it's going to cause a lot of friction in your relationship. So knowing the reason why you were born on earth is very, very critical. The Bible says something in Amos 3 verse 3. Can two walk together except they be agreed? <laughs> so every kingdom that is divided against itself will be brought to desolation. And every city or house, by the case itself, will not stand. It will never work out. Because if the two of you have divergent opposites on earth, there will be a lot of problems. So need, you, need to know, you need to know the reason why you were born. There's a story about um, the, the thing of purpose. It's very, very important. Because when there is no purpose, there won't be any unity. Or when there are two purposes, maybe the man's purpose is different from the woman's purpose. So what you now have in that marriage is two purposes, two different divergent purposes, or two different divergent visions. And when you have two divergent visions, what you have is division, which is division. So when the man runs with a purpose that is not similar to that of his wife, there will be division, and that is what brings division in the marriage. So it's very, very important. Very important. So before you get married, there's some things you need to do. You need to define your life goals. Where am I going to? Where am I going to? Define it. Define your life goals. You need to know where you're going to. A lot of issues too that need to be discussed.